So we're back after a lovely summer break. Have you had a lovely summer break? It's been really, really nice, Roger. Yeah, nice yeah. to sort of get away and a bit of time with the family. Okay, so now we're going to talk about work, work ethic, attitude, all that kind of stuff and uh, how you get yourself into employment. So this podcast episode is sponsored by HB42. Who? HB42. What is HB42? Well, right Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 42 is the answer to everything. HB42 is a sealant adhesive. It does all the sticking and sealing jobs you could ever imagine. Well, I'll need to check out the link myself then. You will not come unstuck if you use that product. Okay, so you just finished a hard day, haven't you? I have, mate. Yep, it's been a real tough one today. 31 degrees and putting OSB on a roof and it's slippery because as soon as you put the yeah, skills yeah. up in the dust so you've got to sweep it off they wax the sun, it don't they I know yeah. and it's unbelievable it even with good grippy soles my safety boots my yeah. workwear yeah. it's just not good enough but um, yeah so I've been up there bashing away and it's been proper hot it's been reflecting off the board so I've got a bit of colour today yeah. so it I does don't it need, bounces I don't off need, I don't need any makeup today OSB so. It's like being in a desert, isn't it? When the sun's shining and it's oh, up like that. Yeah, it's a magic that's, material. That's it's it's yeah. a magic material. What I want to talk about is that we've had a few people, more than a few people, young people, a lot of them are, are youngsters, trying to get into the building industry, yep. trying to get a start, and they go, oh, well, I, can't, I don't know what to do, how to go about it. And then I'm talking to other people, sometimes older people, and they're saying to me, can't get hold of a decent youngster they're all useless and mm. all that, and that and one of the big criticisms they make is to say they're all on their phone they're yeah. you know they're not yeah. engaged they're not on <clears throat> they're not on the site in terms of you know where they are mentally they're with their mates they're any opportunity they get is a bit of slack time on their phone they're not looking around going what can i do how can i get so that kind of puts a lot of people off when they say well this guy's not really interested in learning now i don't want this to turn into a, a thing where we're slagging off young people no i think you know we were all young once even me and um i remember you know very well what it was like and mm. and there's criticisms to be made of older people and if you go to work for somebody we all know about working for the boss from hell mm. or some grumpy guy mm. that, so we don't want to turn this into a grumpy mm. old guys versus young yeah, yeah, people yeah. since the time i was about 21 to now i've probably trained about six or seven fully th all the way through yeah. and i take a lot of pride when i go out to norway to see carl and i see what he's doing and i think this guy I can remember the day he turned up with me, mm. recommended by the college as a mature student, he was about 23, 24, had his own transport which went in his favour because I didn't have to worry about picking him up. He rocked up and he was literally engaged from the day that he started with me to, well even to now, he's still really engaged sort of thing, mm. you know, and that, uh, you take a lot of pride in that. The lucky youngsters managed to get on with a team of chippies or a team of brickies mm. because there's enough going on and enough personalities there that there's not going to be a one-to-one -one clash potentially yeah, yeah. and I always think that's pretty awkward because like the example you said about they're on their phones and the rest of it well years ago it might not have been phones it might have just been some some other fidget they might have just been mm. always staring into space because they were constant concentration levels just weren't there at 16 yeah, yeah, 17 yeah. 18 they were still they were still children potentially you know well absolutely and, and you know <laughs> Again, I said I don't want to criticise people, but sometimes I find they're still children at 25 or, or whatever, and you think, come on, you really should be growing up by now, but that, that thing of, of blaming everybody else and expecting everybody else yeah. to... The, the construction industry training board, I really do think I've, I've got a lot to answer for all this, because I was trained, I started my training in 1986 within the construction industry training board and the youth training scheme yeah. on a city and guilds which is not recognized anymore if you want to convert it to mvq for cis it's not recognized anymore really? which is ridiculous that's crazy it's absolutely it? ridiculous the citb um started squeezing the training centers started squeezing the training they mm. they then put a levy on for any employer stroke sponsor we were yeah, we had sponsored right. at the time yeah, yeah. and that created an administrative burden it wasn't a levy unless you had a particularly big turnover or something over about two and a that's half right. million yeah, yeah. but it was still another return to fill in yeah, and yeah. if you're a builder 
and you're yeah. trying to get your work done the last thing you want is another heap of paperwork that you've got to navigate through and not snooker yourself yeah. and that put i can remember people saying not taking you on can't be bothered with all that citb stuff and the mm. levy and all the rest of it mm. it was really really terrible what what i was thinking the citb need to do is i know that they would argue the case say we were providing funds and we were providing you know um bursaries and training money and all the rest of it but it wasn't even enough to cover basic wages for the guys do you know no, what i mean no so no absolutely anyway we could do a whole podcast slagging off the citb but let's let's talk about the people and let's let's assume that the people have got responsibility for themselves now i've had people as no let's start with you you said to me that the guy you got now the assistant you got now farzi that, that is your laborer come mm. whatever you said he gets up six o'clock, walks to the station. Yeah, go on. You gets on a train and make sure he rendezvous with me on, on route, no matter what. And he will find a way of getting there, whether he would have to get up even earlier to make a train or walk. And, and yeah. I just find that incredible. And that's because he's got a sense of need and he really needs to work and all the rest of it. And I think that's an advantage but he's a little bit older so he's not 17 he's not 18 yeah i've got other people who are you know good friends and all the rest yeah, of it yeah. who really want to start but they can't they can't make it they just can't do exactly the same thing they can't get on a bike or anything like that and uh -huh. i think to myself that to me shows me that they're just not committed enough yeah and i really i need a bit of commitment I no, need absolutely to and i think that's the first thing isn't it is you guys have got these guys that you know i've been in that situation where you've been outside their house yeah engine running they're still in bed yeah that's so yeah, annoying knocking on the door and their mum goes oh he's still and that and even their mums aren't always their apologists for them you know, know. Going, for god's sake you know your boy's going to be out out of work again he's going to be back on there get him up yeah kick exactly. his backside yeah. get him downstairs get him out on the on the thing and i know and that's how they go on sometimes you know the, the, the it, first thing isn't it you've got to be keen to get up to turn up yeah know? absolutely yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is i really don't i really don't know what it is and i just think you know when i was at school i did woodwork and i did metal work and i was interested i was thinking mm. blimey this is great i love getting a saw in my hand mm. and i want to do some cutting but when i speak to some of the youngsters now and i say what have you done at school you know what mm. sort of woodwork have you done yeah. we did a little bit of and they call it something like design technology yeah, and it's yeah. completely That's different right. and i yeah, think to yeah. myself Ah, oh, why aren't they ba making basic things out of wood and metal yeah. and all the rest yeah, of it? Yeah. Because that might fire up something in them, you know. And um, I mean, when I was, they won't let them touch a saw because they might. What health and safety cut, at cut school? Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's like it's like you take a youngster on. They say you, you can't climb up more than two rungs of a ladder or something. Yeah. And then you think, well, I can't use him because I can't, you know. And obviously, you've got to look after these kids. You don't want them to injure themselves. But at the same time, you think they've got to they've got to get up there you know so, what, so what's the answer then what is the answer for the kids well for the youngsters I, I think we've got to take them out of the the cotton wall and and, mm. uh, and let them experience life as mm. as it is and you know and i'm not in favor of harming anybody i think mm. that but i think that they have also i just wonder i mean it's, it's very easy to say this and as i say i don't want to turn it into something where we're slagging off a younger generation but i don't know whether society as a whole is willing to expose them to the same kind of risks that, mm. that i mean i know that, that you know that we look at denmark for instance now you think that, that denmark is a very civilized safe sort of place but when they get their forest schools out there and the kids are out there and they're eight years old and mm. they've got blooming great knives yeah. and they're, they're whittling down sticks yeah. and they're making stuff and they're up 30 foot up a tree yeah. but you know it's all that stuff isn't it yeah that, that you kind of think are we just being too are we doing them any favors with, with protecting them slightly too much and they're not feeling the consequences of their own actions i think it's heartbreaking because i often get messages through skill builder mm. and directly to my email and sometimes through to my text and people who are keen and they want to say you know say are you taking anyone on any apprentices yeah. and i think to myself even that even the fact they've gone to the trouble yeah. of getting in touch with me is a really good thing you know they're showing some sort of um yeah. initiative sure. you know yeah, even yeah. though i just apologize that i can't physically help mm. um but you know if i can do some training in the future when i've got a bit more time absolutely yeah. we, we'll upskill the nation if on our own roger however we can yeah i, I mean from my point of view I, I think it's fantastic i mean part of the reason why we do this is yeah. to pass information and pass knowledge on and try and 
spread that out. I think we're both aware of the fact that if we take what we know with us, we've done nobody any favours. Yeah. And somebody gave us that information. That's true. Some of it we just made up as we went along. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's the beauty of YouTube, really, and the yeah. medium of video and anybody being able to video themselves and put something out there. Whether it's peeling an apple and you've got a technique, you know, someone else might want to learn that, you know, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but. No, no I think it's absolutely, I think it's a university, basically. I yeah. think it's an amazing resource that, that you can almost learn anything, and I'm doing it all the time, you know, I'm going on there, and I know you, you take the mickey out of me and call me a, a Luddite with a phone and everything else, but that's <laughs> not, I mean, the case, you know, I learned how to make videos and yeah edit stuff and, yeah and, you know and every time I think okay I've got to learn something new I've got to learn something that's gonna I mean carry me on I, I was on the it. side of the road in the van and I didn't know where the jack was yeah I didn't know where to jack it up once I'd found the jack so I, I went straight onto YouTube where is the and someone had done a video on it you know yeah. it's almost yeah. like if you can think it yeah someone's done it and I yeah. do think that the you know for youngsters who want to try and get a craft i mean look there's a young guy who's 14 years old on instagram he's really keen on being a plumber mm. i follow him he's um got quite a few followers and he does little you know shows his tools off collects a bit of money buys himself some tools and i just find that really really amazing i think god this guy already knows what he wants to do and um, he got slated by someone someone because he goes and does little jobs and someone had said oh you can't do that you're not qualified and all the rest of it and i was thinking to myself well i didn't think i went straight back on in his defense and i just said give this guy a break he's he's not out in the streets yeah. doing any bad stuff no no he wants to go to work he wants to make a future yeah. for himself he yeah. wants to he wants to become a plumber you should we should all be embracing it and encouraging yeah. it and all the rest of it yeah. Yeah. anyway I've, I've sent him some spanners did you? Yeah. Good man. A great beauty of Amazon. You could send, yeah. got his address and I got some, some decent spanner sent up to him. Good so, um, stuff. Yeah. yeah on oh, behalf I, might, of, I might have a few bits to turn out. Who knows? Yeah, you know, absolutely. But that, but there's, a, there's an example of um, yeah. him, this youngster, making his own luck. Mm, he's he 14 is. years old and he's making his own luck. Okay, he's doing it via social media, but it's because... It, he wants it so bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's he the will, way, isn't it? And he Why will not? get a break. So, I mean, the problem is sometimes that uh, youngsters, you, you assume that they know how to behave, that they're house trained, that they kind of know, you know, the basics of, of how to get on with people. But then you find they don't. You find that they're completely <sighs> off the scale. I know. And um, I've got a bit of a horror story. And when I, when I think back, I was only about 18, 19. I was fresh out of my apprenticeship. And I'd been given by my firm an apprentice to sort of shadow and that's how it was going yeah. to be done you know i was yeah. going to teach him the ropes and this particular job the, the customer was away and we were doing a conversion and this bit of work we did together in this first week got to about friday lunchtime and we were all all done and i thought right i'll leave him to hoover up all he's got to do is hoover up leave the hoover okay. outside shut the door and go and i'm going to go it's like poet's day yeah, i've yeah. done my bit i've earned the firm the money and i'm off Sunday I get a phone call from the governor saying oh I need to speak to you the police are uh, police want to speak to you and I said well what's going on he said uh, well you tell me I said well I don't know what you're talking about he said uh, what happened at work on Friday I said well we did the job cleared up and went he went ah he said um, well I've, there's been um, someone's gone through the panty drawer in the job and turned it all upside down real had a good rummage through and um the, the, obviously the lady's underwear drawer and um i came clean i said look i did leave early and i left him <laughs> i left him to clean, clean up yeah. i didn't know he was going to go all through anyone's yeah, yeah. drawers i yeah. had no idea and i suppose the lesson there was i mean he seemed all right this youngster but he was obviously had a few screws loose somewhere because you know nowadays you've got to check and vet everyone and yeah, all the rest you of see that i funnily enough I, I know a very similar story to that and it just makes you realize that these people are about who think that that is okay behavior because uh, a builder i know he had the plasterers in and he'd sheeted it all off and then when he came around to have a look at how they were getting on he noticed these footprints going up the stairs so uh -huh. he said to him he said what you've been doing upstairs so nothing for him to do upstairs no reason for him to go up there and go oh we've been upstairs of course you've been upstairs so i can see your footprints on the carpet <laughs> going up there you know so what are you doing upstairs so one of the guys got well, we only went to have a look at the underwear. What? You know, this is a lady's house, and they, it's a reasonably good-looking girl, I guess, and, and they just thought they were going rummage through and see which particular Victoria's Secret she'd got there. So, so 
they they thought they said to the builder that's perfectly reasonable kind of that's all we what? were doing and of course he got rid of them but but that is you know people would be horrified to know yeah that i know i mean that's around, enough to that's enough you. to put people off having work done in their house for well, exactly. the rest of their I days mean, or, or leaving people to do it and i mean that's always been my thing <laughs> is that, that that to to be trusted you know to be able to go yeah. to someone's house and to say i've left you the key turn up that yeah. everything's going to be all right that they could leave ten thousand pound on the table and mm. you wouldn't touch it and mm. that is that goes a long way but it seems to me that some people not just youngsters mm. but some people just aren't house trained in any mm. any respect at all are they no and then there's another reason why people might not want to take anyone on just through the well, risk i, of I wouldn't you break. Know, and that's that's it as soon yeah. as somebody lets you down in and not necessarily like that but in some way yeah you know i'll tell you what i had a guy he's working cigarette butts in the garden you know we were mm. just up the road here funnily enough mm. and uh, you know the girl funnily enough because she just moved down very close to you now oh, but right. but um anyway so i had a couple of guys around there smoking away all day long so when she came home she's got a lovely garden really loved the garden she's mm. picking cigarette butts mm. out and she just mm. said to me in a very sort of quiet way she said i just don't like it you know can you stop them yeah. doing it and i thought why do i have to tell them why can't they yeah. just do that as part of but they don't they just you know you get people to go in people's houses turn the radio on start smoking all the rest of it and it just and then they wonder why they've got you know i've got a young lad at the moment who's doing some work for me and he's good he's good at his trade definitely good mm. at his trade but he's aggressive mm. he's not mm. you're not comfortable with mm. him around you know and he's just ah. and mm. and you think he's a bit of a hothead mm. and then he said to me i haven't got much work on and i thought i know why because mm. you just mm. you're not exactly frighten people but mm. just make people feel uncomfortable mm. with that level of aggression that you've got so it's a good idea if you can find someone to tell you these things, isn't it? You just got to think about your effect mm. on other people. It's almost like um, there must be, you know, like a generic set of questions or a process to go through if you were thinking about taking someone young or giving someone some help and just asking them the simple questions like, you know, have you got good house manners? Do mm. you know how to use the toilet cleanly? Do you, you know, yeah, do you yeah. know that you should take your shoes off yeah. or, you know, and all of the basic stuff, be polite, say hello, engage with people and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But it's, um, you just don't, do you just say, oh, yeah, turn up Monday and we'll see how you get on. But yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it and can... you don't know who they are or where they've come from or anything. And, and like you say, there could be, could be something like that. Yeah incident yeah. in the underwear drawer but it could be them nicking stuff couldn't it it could be them yeah just helping themselves yeah to, to all kinds it, of bits it is a, it is a big worry but I, I just break my heart it really does roger i just think to myself my career has been tough but fulfilling and mm. rewarding and uh, most of all the rewards for me aren't earning wow. decent money and i can earn decent money is the rewards for me is i absolutely love making stuff mm. and i i just just love every day when I've been able to produce something like a roof structure and that feeling it gives you is just mm. priceless and it's not about the money you step back and you think geez I'm so lucky to be able to do this to have the knowledge to, to do this and and when I get people like Carl who started day one not having any knowledge of cutting a piece of timber mm. to seeing what he's now producing in Norway this amazing Viking carpentry mm. big stuff and that fills me with a lot of pride, you know, mm, and it gives sure. me a lot of um, reward, if you like. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's no and there's yeah. no money involved there. It's just a real nice nature, a, a human nature thing, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I just wish we could do more for the youngsters, especially because there are going to be a big percentage of school leavers yeah. who aren't academically brilliant. We know that, and they just need yeah, yeah. technical do colleges. You know, what, I, I've, Many years ago, among the many, many things that I've done, I um, I went down to the Isle of Wight Festival, the, the, the mm. really big one back in the day, and um, I wanted to work down there. I was a bit of a hippie, and you know, and I went down there and just hung around, saying, "You're taking people on? No, they're not taking people on." And uh, there were a few people around, you know, but I went down to the site the next day. You're taking people on? No, we're not taking anybody on. Third day taking anybody on yeah we'll take you on get it going so we had to go out in a truck about 12 of us mm. only laboring mm. only doing the odd bit and everyone got in and i got in and sat beside the boss 
the driver, you yeah. know, the guy who was in charge, who was going to be our boss for the day, and just sitting beside him and having a little chat as we went along and him knowing. When I went the next day to try and get a day's work, he recognised me from the day before. Ah. And then, yeah, he and then I was in. So yeah. so then I ended up, I was down there for three months and, and, and working and, and, you know, regularly yeah, yeah. And, and doing pretty well. But it was that initial thing of, I yeah. thought, none of those other people out of the 12 yeah. people wanted to sit in the front. Yeah. It's almost like, oh, they don't want to sit next to the teacher. So to me, if, if you're going somewhere and you're not engaging with mm. the people that are there, you're, you're missing a trick, aren't you? But it can also be, that could have also been a stroke of luck if that was the last base left and you went and took it and it worked out like that for you because that would yeah. have been a great lesson. And that happened exactly, the same thing happened to me. I was class clown at school. Yeah. I wanted to always make people laugh. I was being sent out of the classroom, go and stand outside. You yeah, know, yeah. I was just class clown. Yeah. I was sort of bigger, I thought I'm bigger than school. I can do anything I want and all the rest of it. Mm. When, I, when I got to college, it was typical of me. I was like being that age I was sort of like a, a minute or two late and so when I got in on the first day in the big workshop and all the desks there was two chippies apprentices on each desk mm. the only space left was on the less on the desk of the lecturer right at the front mm. I've walked in didn't know anyone I I just he said right in there you're here and I was like oh no and I stand there and I felt about that big of all these people behind me I felt eyes burning into me and when you're that age you're sort of 16 you think oh they must think I'm this and maybe they think oh, I've got a terrible jacket you know and all that sort of stuff <laughs> you know you you and I was just I was felt like I was red I couldn't face backwards and I felt really kind of awful all I could do was focus on this guy who looked really scary I didn't know anyone behind me and I was face to face with the lecturer he's on the bench there we were on the I was on the bench here your toolkit's on the end here and he was doing us an introduction into the course and what we'll be doing and filling a few forms in and I was thinking oh no he said and this is every he says where you are now is going to be your place for the whole oh, of the right. course he says yeah, yeah. you Brilliant. look after the tools on your end of your bench and all the rest of it I yeah. was like oh this is getting worse and worse and the first week I sort of tolerated it, got to know a few of the blokes, but I was so I was so close to him, I had to engage with everything he did, but I was focused, I had the luckiest spot in the world because I could clearly see what he was marking, how he was doing it. There wasn't any of that, how did you do that, sir? Because, you know, if you're down the sure, back yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. I was, usually I'd want to be at the back, yeah. but this time yeah. I'm at the front, out of my comfort zone, and it was the best place I could have ever been. And at the end of the first week, we, they were going to issue us with a kit of tools, right? And this is a kit of tools sponsored, you had to pay £2.50 a week, and you paid it back over like mm. the next three months or something like this. And there's all these boxes at the back, all taped up. And um, he said, right, starting from the back of the classroom, turn around, the first two go, take a box and bring it back to your bench. And when I got back, got because I was at his end of the classroom, I was the last one to go down on my own, walk of shame. And there's this really tatty box that's left. Oh, no yeah. one had picked the yeah. tatty box up. It was just a smashed to pieces cardboard box. And so I just sort of picked it up, took it back. I could barely lift it put it on my bench and everyone's rummaging opening them up rummaging through and you know there was like you had a couple of chisels marking gauge a plane mm. all you, you know lovely bit of stuff mm. anyway I opened my box up I've got this great big plane out well, blimey what's that and I, I'm again I'm not facing back another plane out oh. six chisels <laughs> um, a marking gauge all these tools and I'm and he said um, Mr. Burridge, his name was, what a fantastic guy. He turned around to me and said, oh, he said, I think you've got one of the old kits, he said. And he knew that no one would pick that tatty box up. And he knew that's, that's the, the box. He, he said, that's one we had left over from last year, but wow. they've cut the budget this year. And it was like an absolute godsend. And from that day forward, I thought, oh, I'm just really lucky. This mm. guy, this guy's looking after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. He's, he's, he must have read me like a book, seeing class clown's gone give him a chance he gave me a chance and it yeah. changed my life because i felt he was he was he he saw something in me he took some or something had left me yeah. i grew up literally i grew up in six months and yeah. from that day forward i thought i'm going to be a carpenter and i'm going to have a career yeah. and you know it's a good feeling yeah that's, that's brilliant isn't it yeah, I've still got some of those tools. Tassie box. Do you know what? That's funny, isn't it? Those first ones that you just have and you, yeah. you, they follow you through life. You think, how's that happen? Yeah. How's those those very early tools? Yeah, I know. And uh, you do, you get affectionate about them. Yeah, you're nostalgic. You're very upset. If and they look them. like antiques now as well. Well, yeah. I used to think of the antique tools and my sort of old man used to get for me from um, car boot sales and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And they look like... Some nice stuff, yeah. some really nice stuff. I mean... I that that's digressing and we will talk about this in the future but 
um, I went to one of the big foundries up in, in Sheffield and one of the old guys was saying to me, you know, when we got uh, a plane or a, f or a vice or something, it was coming out of the, the forge, you know, well, obviously hot drop mm. forge. He said, that casting, or sorry, that forge, you know, whatever, mm. he said, that would take about three months for the stresses to go out of that. He said, that thing would carry on moving and, you know, Incredible. tiny amount, mm. but it would do it, right? So. So he said, so what we're to do with those castings, he said, we do it, drop it, like you're looking at the components for a, a, a plane or mm, a, mm. anything like that, vice. And they would take them and put them in a field. Really? Yeah, and they would just leave them there. It didn't matter that they're rusty because the shot blast them out mm. and all the rest of it, right? But all they would be doing is stacking them out in the field, out in the open air for three months for those those costing to relax and people that know about this will probably go yeah that's what they, there's kind of they're going through a process where there's been such a shock to them when they're made that they're just normalizing it that's what to me then yeah that's what happened to you so so after that three months then they go and grab them then they would machine them and they stop moving and they said what's happening now because they, they're being made in india or wherever yeah, they're yeah. being made cheaply he said they're out the forge they're into the machine shop, they're all machined up. He said, the bloody things are still moving. Amazing. He said, they're not actually mm. st mm. stop, you know. Mm. So, so he said, so when you get a plane or a chisel, the chisels are the, mm. the thing, because when you get a chisel, the way that it's bellied, mm. that back is, mm. is bellied, you know. Mm. And that's why the Japanese and all the rest of it, we're going to be doing a thing on Japanese yeah, we chisels are. soon. You've got some to, to try out. But all those things. Sorry, guys. That's that phone you've got to hang on. Child's right? phone. Um, <laughs> so all those things matter, you know, but, but when they, they come out and they're just to a penny. So if you get hold of those old tools that come yeah, yeah. from a car boot sale and they are... They the, even the look real McCoy. rustic, like yeah, yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's funny you should say that. Yeah, but that's really it. So, so the new stuff, a lot of the time, it, it takes hours and hours and hours to get a chisel into... It's always a very, very slight curve on the back. And of course, that means that you just can't get that blade it's going to be gouging at the edges mm. or, or taking mm. a little bit too much out in the middle you know mm. it doesn't matter on a lot of stuff mm. yeah kind of rough stuff you do it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> thanks mate <laughs> no but you know because you're out on a roof a lot of the time doing, doing doesn't the matter big that structures. i'm on a roof i still make everything as perfect as i physically I know you can do, but if you were doing if you were doing if you were in Fine the joinery, joinery doing dovetail, doing hardwood jo dovetail might dovetail joints yeah the joinery shop it would yeah. be a different matter wouldn't it yeah you know you'd you'd really be worried about yeah. that odd bit you know, yeah, but, absolutely. but i say you know horses for courses maybe you don't want to take the japanese chisels out on site maybe you want a different they're, they're going to be just for fine work yeah really fine work you know second fix work and i'm mm. making a few joints and that sort of stuff which we love to do i'm not making joints you know it scarf, we're getting a bit of trouble over scarf in a joint i never yeah. knew what the term meant scarf in a joint until no, no. uh yeah all the all the <laughs> Well, they boosted our views, didn't they? All those, those. Uh, yeah, he said I was looking at that scarf a joint, then I came across this, but I still watched it anyway. I thought it was fantastic. I was like, yeah, yeah, this is fantastic. Do you know what? That could be great, couldn't it? Turn somebody from a. Yeah, a I was dope, just about to take a smoking. Yeah. And now I'm a carpenter's apprentice <laughs> by accident. Anyway, um, what what advice can we give youngsters? And if we, you know, we we both found a way through, and we found somebody we were lucky enough to find people that inspired us and that looked after us and that, that could see something in ourselves that maybe we couldn't even see. Well, if you are the son or daughter of a tradesman, the first thing is your parent, tradesman parent, might be saying to you, I don't want you to come into the building trade. That's yeah. what, and that's what 90% of them say. If I had a son, would I want him to be a carpenter? If he really wanted to be a carpenter, absolutely. If he was slightly unsure, I would be steering him somewhere else because it's a tough industry. Sometimes you don't get paid. Sometimes you get rained on. Sometimes you don't. You get a job, you turn up, and they don't want you, mm. and it's horrible. You get you know rejection, financial burden, and all the rest of it. So yeah, not selling it to me. I've got to say <clears throat> that's the problem. <laughs> but if you are serious and you're young and you want to come into it, network, ask around. You know, do you know any tradespeople? Ask them if they'll give you some experience. Don't give them, don't say, I want you to take me on full time. Can I come with you? Do you do weekend work? Can I come with you at weekends? Yeah, yeah. When I'm having my school 
break can i come with you for a couple of days don't put any pressure on them a yeah. couple of days and say you know i just just want to watch and learn sweep up and all the rest of it you haven't got to pay me I don't ask for money to start with just go to get a feel for it you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and just show some commitment and the chances are unless they're an ass they will give you some money you know because yeah. you can't let a, a man do or a boy do a day's work and not give him some money yeah. i don't think you yeah, know you just don't know the people i know they would do that well <laughs> i think yeah. that's a bit out of order <laughs> of course fair. it is but, but that's the way some people are they go oh, i've got a free labor here yeah no but i yeah, couldn't do it I mean, I you could. wouldn't stay long you wouldn't <clears> stay long if they didn't get the idea that they've got to start paying you but actually i think that, that this thing about wages in a way when you're starting if you're lucky enough to have some parents that can you know support you through that yeah. look at it like education you know yeah. and the money isn't going to make a huge amount the, the, the money that you get is so small yeah i mean when i started blimey you're going to go back a bit now four quid a week you know was, was the money four yeah. quid a week give my mother two um it wasn't it wasn't anything no. it wasn't worth having really in a mm. way you know but but it, it's so Although you like to get your little wage packet, it, it was almost a disappointment, you know. So it's more about getting the experience, getting the education, and working out if that's the right place to get it. Because mine definitely wasn't when I started. I've said this before on a podcast, but it definitely the guy was so miserable. He so much did not want an apprentice, and he was mm. burdened <clears> with them, and he just ignored me. So I knew that there was no point in me staying there at all. You know, that wasn't going to help. Mm. So. So you have to find the right person. When you find the right person like you did with the college and mm. the brick I work for, then you know. Then mm. you know you're on your way, don't you? you yeah, know? yeah. And then, and then you want to give. And then you want to give like, you know, you, you, you're going to do a really good job because you want to give something back to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to make sure that they understand that their faith in you is, is, is justified. It's, what would you advise? What well, I mean, the only advice I can give, generic advice, is the obvious. Make sure you turn up on time. Make sure you're keen. Keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. Mm. And all that sort of basic stuff. Make sure if you say you're gonna be somewhere, be there and don't let anyone down. Because you let someone down, they, they're not gonna take you again. Mm. What do you and think? And that doesn't stop, does it? You, you get people that let you down when they're youngsters and you think, all right, I'll give them a yeah, you know, bit of slack there. But sometimes you get people who are 40 years old who just let you down who don't turn up and you think hang on i'm giving this guy good wages i'm giving him plenty of work and then then you know everything's ready and the guy doesn't yeah. turn up and you phone him up and it's oh some small thing their big toe hurts or something well so I no mean, I, th I think that's a massively important thing is that level of commitment reliability yeah. so reliability yeah. would be top of my list yeah. i think good yeah. attitude yeah yeah politeness yeah humor if you allow it yeah bit of humor and engage with people do you know i mean if you're shy i know it's a bit difficult but try to engage i think we, you want people who are just good to be around don't you and, and that that is how you employ people that's how you get people to work in your house and everything else you know the, i realize sometimes that you know people employed me because they just like me and they thought mm. okay is it, this guy's all right so i think that's the same if you you've got a youngster coming along he's got to he's got to have a look at himself and just be be willing to not moan i mean i mean that's the, the, the number one thing that i say to him is don't come in here moaning you know whatever your problem mm. is you know if, if it's hard it's cold it's hot mm. it's this it's that mm. don't moan because we've already got enough moaners mm. here we don't need anyone else on site bringing us down what we've got to do here we've got to get the job done and i think the other thing that i said to my son is they're not they're not employing you out of the goodness of their heart. They're employing you because you can make money and that, yeah. that you're going to help them make money. Mm. So you've got to think about how you do that, mm. how you add value to their, their operation. Right, what can I do for you today that is actually going to add value to your operation so it's not going to cost you money to employ mm. me or whatever. And I think people lose sight of that, don't they? They lose sight of the fact that everybody it's not doing it out of the goodness of their heart, you know. No, I suppose, but then, you know, when, when you're only 16 or 17, you have no understanding of business and how business is run, you just think, he's the boss, he's got loads of money, that's all you think, doesn't, isn't it, you know? So, well, uh, uh, that, that to me is the problem, because they, they just assume, oh, he's got loads of money, I can see he's got a big house, he's doing this, he's doing that, therefore, I don't need to earn mm. him any more money, mm. because he's already got some. But uh, what I'm saying is that, that having that attitude where you go, 
if he's making money out of me, he's not going to sack me. Mm. Why would he? He's going to keep me mm. because he's doing well. I'm adding yeah, yeah. value to his operation, and I think you know, okay, there's a there's a, there's a balance there. Mm. We've got to get that right, you know. But so many have made so many mistakes, like simple mistakes, like you have a really, really hot weekend and then you never get, you get the phone call on the Monday morning. Mm. Well, you don't get the phone call on the Monday morning, you get the no-show and you think, oh, I wasn't feeling very well. And you think, oh, God, really? What well, after that? Well, it's been beautiful weather today. They're not sitting in the garden. Yeah, We're yeah. out with their mates. Yeah, or, yeah. And it's kind of like, oh. And they get their mum to phone up. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit frustrating, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, anyway, I feel, you know, I do feel sorry for people. I think that, it's hard to get a start, and I can remember how it felt for me. Yeah. You know, as clear as anything, I can remember thinking, how am I ever going to lift myself out of this? Yeah, yeah. And get get a start, get on the road to where I wanted to be, wherever that is. And mm. uh, here, basically. Yeah. Well, in Germany, I'm going to go to Germany, and they do um, a big carpentry and roofing expo. It's on next February, uh, end of January next year. Mm. And um, first time I'll... Cologne? Uh, Stuttgart oh, and the yeah, first time yeah. I went I was just blown away by the camaraderie between yeah. all of the carpenters they all have a uniform even though they're self-employed a lot of art yeah. artisans yeah, yeah. they have this uniform it's incredible they have this uh, certain number of buttons which represent their level of skill etc 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 and I was thinking god why aren't we like that in England you know it'd be fantastic wouldn't it and they're held in such high regard in the community yeah. They're like they're, they're they're like doctors and lawyers. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not like oh look at this guy, he's a tramp. You know, he's just. And that's what you want to be. What you want to a lawyer yourself so you get all the buttons and uh, no. not you want to be a lawyer, but what I'm saying is you want to you feel. No, I just looked at them and I felt blimey, these guys they've got it together, they've got it going on, and the youngsters are just going to want to come into. They see this carpenter walking down the street in his in his gear with his kit of tools, and they're going to be like, I want to do that. Like they see a fireman, I want to be a fireman. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They see me in the most. So it's all about clothes. the uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. But I did think, I just thought, blimey, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. And I wonder what other countries are like as well, you know? It's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's a shame that it's just not like that here, really. Travel the world, Robin. Having a look at the way other people work, that'd be nice. That'll be perfect. Yeah. I'm interested in the Americans. I mean, the times I've been out on site in America and seen the way the guys go about it, oh, it's good fun, you know, you see. Yeah, one of my very, really very different. good mates, Carpenter, who I used to do a lot of work with, Steve, he's now living in California. Yeah. He's a joinery manager now, so he's in the, he? kind of in the shop, but they do go out and fit stuff as well. Yeah. And he loves it. Does I mean, he? they're just... Really? He loves it. He just thinks the, you know, the kit's big, the trucks are big, the houses are big. Yeah. You know, the money's no, not really much different, but it's just great and there's buzz about the place. And, you know, it's kind of like he, he really sells it, you know, when he talks yeah, to me yeah, about it, he yeah, really yeah. sells it. And I yeah. think, oh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. That's like proper building, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. are you going to go out and see him or what? I, I am planning to get out there at some stage to see well, Steve, yeah. But take your phone, get a yeah. few videos. Yeah, but not in the next uh, year. Next year's a big year. I'm doing lots of uh, travel, but not um, not work, not carpentry travel. I will be doing some carpentry oh, right. travel. Okay. Yeah. So you reckon your house will be finished and you'll be off? Yeah, mate. It's going to be, uh, yeah, oh, 50 been, days away next year. Been nice knowing you, Robin. Oh. You'll come with me, mate. <laughs>